Here are a couple of more interesting growth and income stock picks, courtesy of our growth and income stock strategist, Todd Bunton, who joins me now. Uh, the one that you've uh, put on your radar here is um, Norfolk Southern, very recognizable railroad. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're pretty famous. Uh, they have over 20,000 route miles in 22 states. They're mostly on the eastern uh, half of the U.S., uh, but they transport things like coal, uh, automotives, they have uh, a lot of industrial products. Mm -hmm. And it's really strengths in the latter two that have offset uh, weakness in coal. And that's helped them deliver six positive earnings surprises in the last seven quarters. Wow. So very good earnings momentum. That was the case last quarter. They saw mid-single digit revenue growth as, as strength in things like chemicals, metal construction, autos, intermodal, more than offset weakness in coal, which has been struggling across the board. Um, but that but because the company is highly uh, leveraged, they have a high degree of operating leverage, I should say, mm -hmm. they're able to turn mid-single-digit revenue growth into double-digit earnings growth. And you saw an improvement in their operating ratio. So a so, uh, lot going right for this company right now. Uh, and analysts revise their estimates pretty significantly higher for the company after the last beat, sent it to a Zax rank of two, which is a buy rating. So good earnings momentum going on here. And if you look at consensus estimates, analysts expect about 6% earnings growth this year. 13% growth next year. And again, this, you know, as a railroad, they're heavily tied to the U.S. economy. But as the economy kind of picks up a little bit of steam here, uh, this, would be, this could be a good play in 2014 uh, to, you know, with the growth factor and also uh, with the dividend. If you take a look, they pay a dividend that yields 2.3%. And since 2003, they've increased their dividend at a 21% compound annual growth rate, which is absolutely fantastic. If you think about it, it doubles about every three to four years. Mm -hmm. So very good income story. And if the U.S. economy improves and earnings grow, I would expect that dividend to continue growing um, over the next couple years. And valuations are pretty reasonable, too. They traded just 14 times 2014 earnings. So there's a little bit of value to go along with the good growth and income metrics here. Yeah, and railroads, uh, especially on this level, uh, they're... Their shipping and freight activity is also uh, many times used as a barometer for economic. Yeah, uh, yeah, they're also turn or downturn. Often seen as a bellwether. That's that's very true. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that. Yeah, another one that you uh, want to talk about is Dupont Fabros Technology, uh, not to be confused with the regular Dupont company. That's that right. We all know. Yeah, and they're not in fabrics either. So uh, yeah, it's a. They're, Glad you said that. They're Technically, a REIT, they're structured as a real estate investment trust, uh, focused on technology. They, they own and operate wholesale data centers. So companies will house their servers, and this company will, will manage and cool those servers. They, they require a lot of energy to cool. Mm -hmm. uh, but they have about 10 data centers in four U.S. markets. They're in New York, New Jersey, uh, Chicago, Virginia, and, of course, Silicon Valley. Uh, but they're expanding as well. Um, and if you look, the company uh, delivered a very solid uh, earnings beat back in October, and that was driven by double-digit increase in revenue and very strong increase in funds from operation, which is essentially just earnings per share plus depreciation because they have such you know, high uh, fixed assets, high real estate. They have to depreciate that on the books, but you know, they, they add it back to get funds from operation, more of a, a closer to uh, what you'd expect cash flow to be. But, uh, but good earnings momentum going on here. Uh, analysts revised their estimates higher after the last beat, sent it to a Zach's rank of two. Uh, recently, just today on Wednesday, uh, December 11th, fell to a number three, which is a hold rating. But still, the long-term metrics look very good here. The earnings momentum is still positive, so it's still a name I recommend. Um, and if you look at the growth projections for the company over the next couple of years, pretty pretty significant. They, based on consensus estimates, analysts expect about 29% uh, earnings growth this year and 20% growth next year. So very good growth. Uh, and as a REIT, they have to pay out at least 90% of their earnings mm -hmm. in the form of dividends to avoid paying tax on that money. So very good income as well. They pay a dividend that yields 4.2%. They've more than doubled that since 2011. And as earnings continue to grow, that dividend will continue to grow as well. And all that at a very reasonable price. They traded just 10 times 2014 earnings. Now a lot of that is uh, there's a little bit of uh, leeriness within REITs. They've been actually one of the worst performing sectors um, in the market in 2013. A reason for that is because of the Fed tapering mm -hmm. or fears over tapering uh, it might hurt high yield stocks. Mm -hmm. But I'd say a lot of that is already priced in now with you know the stock trading at just 10 times earnings. So mm -hmm. for the more enterprising investor, this could be a name to, uh, to pile into for 2014. All right. 
Are you enterprising enough to own either of these? I am not. <laughs> okay. Todd uh, has uh, other articles, other stock pick uh, suggestions on our website, as do uh, many of our uh, equity strategists at zax.com. You can see more stock picks and stock picking strategies just by going to the homepage, zax.com, and linking to them right from there. With Todd, I'm Terry Ruffalo.